Hey, what's up, Leron here. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you a short and sweet process that isn't something special, to be honest, but it just shows you how I practice watercolor uh, for better or worse. Sometimes I don't get the exact result I want like this one, which I actually like some aspects of the process, but not all of them, as you'll see in just one second. So let's get to it. Um, so I'm gonna get started here with the drawing stage, of course. Now, I want to show you something interesting. I marked where the mountain meets the left edge of paper. And what I'm doing now is putting in the horizon. And from there, I'm going to pull up a line to meet that line I put earlier. And this is actually something I'll often do. If I'm uncertain of a middle section, I'll figure out two different measurements and then have them meet. And that's a good way of um, kind of assisting yourself when you're uncertain of exactly where a line falls. So that's something I will do occasionally. Now I'm going with the horizon and then slowly adding different layers, like in this example of grass and water and whatever is in there. Okay. Uh, I actually really like this drawing stage. I think it works really well. Funny that, that I, um, that I'm kind of impressed by my own drawing stage in this kind of a simple manner. It's really, it really is nothing there, but it's the perfect drawing for me. So now we're moving on to the painting stage. I'm pre wetting the sky and this is going to be kind of a simple landscape showing you how to add a few elements of interest other than just the mountains, some water, the sky. Um, so I'm pre-wetting everything. This is a cold press paper, so it's going to be very thirsty and it's going to absorb the water really fast. So you need to make sure that it's thoroughly wet uh, before you start introducing the the paint you actually want to use. You can bring in paint, bring in more water. It's okay. It's all good, you know. Um, but just know that it can be a bit of a thirsty paper if it's thick and it's cold press. And so I'm really making sure it's wet and then I'm going to start mixing in my blue here. Uh, nothing too strong or saturated, but I do want to keep it soft. That's one thing that is really important for me in this stage because I'm going to have some sharper transitions on the mountain, some sharper edges. So I'm trying to keep the sky kind of ambiguous. Uh, you'll notice the cloud pattern. It feels like to me, at least from left to right in a way and kind of fanning there. So I'm putting in lines of paint with the hopes of what's showing up in between them to be the clouds. So I'm essentially painting the clouds by painting around them in a way, which is something very common to do. I'm increasing a bit of the blueness there and going a little darker. Don't forget, this is going to dry much, much lighter. So have that uh, in mind and take that into consideration. There's a lot of paint that absorbs down because my paper is at an angle so that it moves it down a bit. So I like a lot of water there. So I like to absorb back some of it with my brush. Uh, and then I'm starting to revisit those top areas because remember, again, this is very wet. It's going to dry much, much lighter. Now, one of the fun things in this kind of a process is to decide what edges are going to stay soft and what edges of shapes are going to touch together. And when I start putting in that mountain, uh, you will see me uh, decide to leave some parts of it touching the sky almost. I'm using a tiny brush to uh, absorb back some of the water there. Uh, but you'll notice how I'm leaving an area where they touch. Okay. Um, and I do this from the same purpose that I did when I showed you those other snowy mountains recently is that I like to have some soft edges, uh, not necessarily completely lost but soft. Now in this example, it kind of spread out a lot because the bottom of paper was quite uh, wet still. But if I were to wait maybe 20 more seconds, it would have been a better timing uh, of just having some less defined of an edge. Okay. Um, now I am bringing in a bit of quinacridone rose into my French ultramarine, warming it up a little. Um, it felt to me like the the feel of the ground there on the mountain is even just a bit purpley in some spots. Um, something between a purple and a brown. Uh, so I'm, I'm searching, I'm searching and I added a bit of yellow there. You saw yellow ochre by M. Graham uh, to kind of search and find what the color looks like to me. Um, and then I'm just moving from right to left because I know the areas up top are snowy. So they're going to essentially stay pretty much white. So I don't have to worry about edges there. I can just kind of establish the shape of snow. Now, something I like doing a lot is to break free of the photo and, and try and see and feel the shapes I'm painting myself. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm not following the, the patterns to the T. I'm just recognizing some kind of pattern and going with it. I think there's a lot of freedom in that. 
And I think if you're able to slow down just a bit and really allow yourself time to put a wash, to put a shape, not be so nervous and in a hurry, a lot of good can come out of it. And, you know, sometimes it's a good compromise to be very focused and present with what's going on on paper. And as a result, being a little slow on the technique. So getting a few cauliflowers and uneven drying paint here and there, because what you get out of it is a much better end result in terms of your plan, in terms of the execution. Some areas where the technique isn't perfect aren't going to bother anyone as long as everything else connects nicely. So just a trade-off to have in mind, it's something I don't talk about much. Now, I'm going to remind you, this is a fairly short process, so we're pretty much halfway through. Um, the one thing that becomes very important at this stage, after we're finishing up with the snow and all of these areas, is to continue the wash down. Because what I don't want to happen is, you see how dark it is near the bottom of the mountain, the kind of the foot foothill, is that how you call it? Bottom of the mountain is very dark. And I don't want it to look completely separate from the ground. So while it's still a little moist, it's not that wet because it's a fairly strong paint too, but it's still a bit moist. I'm starting to put in those lower parts of that wash. It's the same wash to me. And I'm starting with a bit of a bluish tone because that's where I see some water, something like that. Now it's very overcast. There aren't any strong, strong colors. It's all fairly muted. And this is what attracted me to paint this scene. Just the, this kind of atmosphere, I like it a lot. Uh, even though I love strong contrast and strong sunlights, as a view, personally, I love these kinds of things because I'm not used to them. We don't get a lot of them here. Snowy, gloomy mountains, right? So every time we, we go somewhere, it's usually that when on a trip or, you know, South America had a lot of views like this. Um, not every time we go on a trip, but it happened in the past. That's the kind of views that I really, really enjoy. I'm just not used to them. So I'm continuing the wash with some nuances of blue, yellow, mostly these two, because I'm trying to convey a feeling of fields. So there's a bit of green to that, a bit of, and you know, I like to break it off into primary colors and let them mix on paper. So right now we have a fairly gloomy scene, didn't have a lot of red, so I'm adding a bit of red to the foreground, but nothing really that special or complex about it. And nothing that I'll tell you even as personally as the person who paints this, nothing that I particularly like yet. Um, and I, I wonder if it's even till the end, if there's something I, I like in particular, but it's just showing you how I practice. Okay. Um, just looking at the reference photo and trying to do a couple of things. One, trying to kind of use what I see as reference and two, finding myself within the process. That's something really important. If you can find yourself within the process, and it's a funny way of saying it, but that's, I think, the best way to describe it. I'm looking for what I want in that process, right? So all of these wet and wet to bring out some details and some different layers. I'm not following anything I see, really. It's just me going at it and getting a lot of interesting layers. That's pretty much it. Now, one thing I wanted to increase here is the contrast between the mountain's snowy side and the sky. So I'm beginning by pre-wetting with a pale wash that has a bit of blue in it and a bit of everything really. Um, and I'm not pre-wetting everything because I felt like it's starting to dry on the left. So I'm going to start establishing the sky on the left and extend the wet area as I go along. And that's something I sometimes do. Um, I don't do it as much with landscapes and cityscapes. I do it more with portraits and still life, but it's interesting seeing this technique here. And now I'm going to extend the wet area. I'm just dipping into the bucket and extending it to the right. So it slowly covers the whole sky. You want to make sure that you help it move as much as you can, because otherwise you will end up with some hard edges uh, in places that are undesired. You know, if it's a hard edge somewhere else, that's cool. But in the sky in particular, that's where you're looking for softness. Now, here's the fun part, because this is pretty much where the reference ends to me. Now, I wanted to add a bit of movement to it, as you always tell me to add movement, and I, and I always forget. 
Um, so the way I'm doing this is by adding a moose <laughs> out of all things. I was like, let's search for a picture of a moose. Now notice how I didn't cut out all of the moving. I was searching for where to place it. Very often in my processes, I, I do cut them short to uh, show, to give you the, the you know the most important things or the, the the most crucial thing for the lesson. But I sometimes cut out a lot of the thinking, which is why I think a lot of people do enjoy the real time filmed videos because I am showing you like here it takes me actually time to think. It takes me time to figure out what I'm doing. So. I wanted to leave that in on purpose and show you like I'm really searching where to place that mousse. And it's very simple. It's just, um, you know, a flat, dark wash. Um, I'm kind of following the rule of thirds. If you pay attention, it's to the left third of the painting. And I wanted it to not intersect with the meeting point of the mountain and the water in the sky. I wanted it to be somewhere else. But notice how the horns do go into the mountain. Okay, that's really important. I am adding a few birds here and there and all of that, but but it is important to realize these horns, um, I wanted to make sure they break into the mountain a bit to show that, that there is this thing here looking at us. Um, now I'm going over it one more time because it felt too weak, um, just making it stronger. The, the camera doesn't really show it that well and even the scan honestly doesn't show it that well, but here's the scan. I think it looks better in the camera arguably and it's a better representation of what it looks like in real life. Um, and I will include a video of that, but hopefully that makes sense. You can see some of the color nuances, at least in the skin. This is how I practice watercolor. I take a picture, I paint it. I usually don't do it from imagination, but sometimes I do, but mostly it's a picture you paint. Sometimes nothing spectacular turns out, you know, I actually really like a lot of aspects about this one, but in, if you ask me my personal taste, it's not the one that I like the most on a personal level, right? But I do think a lot of the technique here is really cool. The way the meeting point of the mountain and the sky and the ground, it does work in an interesting way, right? But I want to share with you just a normal process uh, from start to finish. I hope that helps. I hope that encourages you to give it a try. I will put, of course, the link to the reference photo and everything in the description box. You can give it a go. It's a fairly simple scene. And if you just follow the, the basics of its sky and then merge a bit of it with the mountain, keep the white areas on the mountain, uh, pretty much straightforward wanted to give you something to practice I do want to thank you so much for uh, watching I am starting to change things around in the studio once again so hopefully things will find their place the setup is getting a little better incrementally very slowly uh, but in any case thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video